Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. So, you Xbox Game Pass subscribers out there should be pretty happy right about now. Yesterday, we did talk about an exciting game that will be heading to Xbox Game Pass later this year, but in more of the imminent future, as in the month of March, well, they just announced eight more Xbox Game Pass games, several of which are actually quite interesting. So make sure to stay tuned for that, and we'll talk all about Xbox Game Pass later in the video. Now, also, a little later on, we'll also be talking about Nintendo, as a big game did get a release date for the Nintendo Switch, so we're going to talk about that one as as well. As always though, if you do enjoy the video, make sure to hit that bell notification, subscribe, and like button. It does help out the channel a ton, so I greatly appreciate it. Other than that though, let's just go and jump right into things, starting off with something that caught my eye a little bit ago, and that is about the possibility that we could be getting a new Spyro game in the year of 2022. Now, there's not anything necessarily official about this, so kind of take it all with a grain of salt, but this is coming from the YouTuber by the name of Canadian Guy A. And this was just such a well put together video. I will leave a link in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. But according to him, he does believe that a new Spyro game will release in 2022. And after listening to him in this video, which by the way is very entertaining, but everything that he says, it actually does kind of make sense. Basically what it all kind of boils down to though, is that he's been looking into some different trademarks filed for Spyro at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And interestingly enough, not only is there a lot of movement for Spyro in recent years, but it's almost completely identical with what happened to Crash Bandicoot leading up to the release of Crash Bandicoot 4. Now, maybe this could just possibly be a coincidence, or, or maybe, and this is what I'm hoping that it's going to be, is that we will get a brand new Spyro announcement sometime here soon, and if everything that he says is correct, an announcement for Spyro could actually happen as early as PAX 2022, which is next month in April. Yeah, an announcement for Spyro 4 might actually be happening here real soon, but again, I am going to leave a link in the description below to that video. He's going to go into much more detail than what I did here and it is just such a well put together video so make sure to go watch that give him a subscribe and like and all of that good stuff now we also have a story to talk about here that broke earlier today and this is regarding the all-star team put together by microsoft being the initiative since first being formed the initiative has kind of been described as this all-star team with a ton of talented developers working within the studio and they have since announced that they are working on the perfect dark reboot so there has been some excitement when it comes to this specific studio however the video game chronicles actually broke a story earlier today that has left the community a little bit more concerned when it comes to this studio and that is because reportedly around 34 people from the initiative has left the studio over the last 12 months several of these were key positions as well and it is being cited from multiple former senior developers that this is due to a lack of creative autonomy and slow development progress as the reason for their departures. Interestingly enough though, this also coincides with the initiative bringing in Crystal Dynamics to work on Perfect Dark. And this is actually one of the most interesting things that I found about this article and something that I feel like people are just kind of looking over. But Daryl Gallagher, the head of the initiative, actually talked a little bit more about the vision for this studio and had this to say. In creating the initiative, we set out to leverage co-development partnerships to achieve our ambitions, and we're really excited about all the progress we're seeing with our relationship with Crystal Dynamics. In this journey, it's not uncommon for there to be staffing changes, especially during a time of global upheaval over the last two years, and there's plenty more work in front of us to deliver a fantastic Perfect Dark experience to our players. We wish our former colleagues the very best, and I'm confident in the team we have in place, the new talent joining, and we can't wait to share more with the fans. Now, the reason that this is interesting is that he very specifically said in creating the initiative, it was to leverage co-development partnerships to achieve their ambitions. That means that it was always their plan to get a game started off, or in other words, to initiate a project and then bring in another studio to help make that vision come true. That's where Crystal Dynamics comes in, which I do think is a great fit considering Daryl Gallagher has worked with them before, and plus they did a fantastic 
fantastic job rebooting the Tomb Raider franchise. However, not everybody's going to agree with this approach as you're seeing here with some people saying that they wanted more autonomy. And since bringing in Crystal Dynamics, some people might have less creative control, hence them leaving the initiative. And that's the part of the story that I feel like wasn't really touched up on as much because while you see around 34 people leave the initiative, what's not being talked about is all the people that's coming in from Crystal Dynamics that's working on Perfect Dark. With Crystal Dynamics coming in, which is a big studio, there's going to be some turnover here, which is something that Daryl Gallagher pointed out that this is not uncommon for something like this to happen. Again, though, it just seems like some people within the studio wanted more creative control. Though, do I actually find this to be a cause of concern? As of this moment, no, I really don't, because there's still a lot of talent within the initiative, and they also have a lot of talent with Crystal Dynamics. If this was always their vision to start off a project and then bring in another studio to help, which kind of fits in with the studio's name, but if that is the case, it sounds like everything is just kind of going according to plan, or at least that's the way it's being described by the head of the studio over at The Initiative. Let me know what you think about all this though. With some employees leaving The Initiative, is this a cause for concern or not? Let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and talk about Xbox Game Pass though, because they just announced eight more games for the month of March, several of which, I, like I said earlier, is quite interesting. We'll get into that here in just a moment, but first, let's take a look at all eight games that was announced for the month of March, or the second half of March, starting off with The Dungeon of Nahobok coming over to Cloud Console and PC. Then you have Weird West, The Nonary Games, Shredders, F1 2021, Tainted Grail Conquest, Norco, and then last but not least, you have Crusader Kings 3 heading over to the Xbox Series X and S. Now, this is actually a pretty good lineup of games for a few different reasons. The first of which, for you fans of Japanese games out there, the Nonary Games is an immediate standout. This is a beloved cult classic, and it's not just one game, but it's actually two different games within the Zero Escape trilogy. Now, I will say that I hope they eventually get the third one as well, being Zero Time Dilemma, but the Nonary Games does include 999 as well as Virtua's Last Reward, both of which are outstanding games. Really, anytime you hear about the best games available for the PlayStation Vita or the Nintendo DS, it's not all that uncommon to hear these games here pop up, and that is because they're dark atmosphere and captivating stories and characters. As described, these games are about a group of strangers who are kidnapped and forced to participate in a diabolical game of death. And the question is, who can be trusted? These games will absolutely grab you with the decisions you have to make in life or death situations or life and death type of games as you have to put some trust into complete strangers or, you know, maybe you just don't like them at all. I'll kind of leave all of that up to you, but these games are absolutely excellent and these are just more good Japanese games heading over to Xbox Game Pass. This really has become a theme in the last couple of years with a lot of these Japanese games heading over to Game Pass and it's interesting though in the last six or so months that we're actually seeing some more of these niche titles head over to Game Pass as well. At first, we were kind of seeing some bigger titles such as Neo, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, and stuff like that head over to Game Pass, but now we're starting to see some games such as Danganronpa, or in this situation, the Nonary games come over to Game Pass as well. This is a very good sign for fans wanting more Japanese games on Xbox. Really, it is starting to show that Game Pass has helped improve Japanese games in a big way over on Xbox. Now, another game that stands out here, though, would be Shredders, which is a day one release coming March 17th. This is a snowboarding game, and we did talk about this one earlier in the month. Visually, it looks good. It seems like it has good animations. It does seem ambitious with them saying that you can unlock a huge open world, and even if you don't necessarily like snowboarding games, these games do tend to be fun, so this might be one worth checking out. There's also Weird West that'll be launching directly into Xbox Game Pass on March 31st, and this is actually a game coming from former Dishonored and Prey developers. We both know that those are really good games, but here they're working on this super stylish RPG with a, kind of this top-down perspective. It does seem to kind of work like a dual-stick shooter with branching narratives and story choices, and then on top of that, you can also turn into different creatures. It's definitely very fitting of the name Weird West. It does seem like a unique game, but, but also a very interesting one as well. Again, it will be launching directly into Xbox Game Pass on March 31st. 
Then the last one here, which is actually one of the highest rated games for PC back in 2020, being Crusader Kings 3. This is a strategy game which tends to be a little bit more niche on consoles, but this game has been very successful over on PC. It is estimated to have about 2 to 5 million owners on Steam, according to Steam Spy, and it does have a 91 overall score on Metacritic. Yeah, they've had some success with this game, and it's also very well received, and now after a couple years, it is finally making its way over to the Xbox Series X and S and will be releasing day one into Xbox Game Pass. So if you do like strategy games, you're definitely going to want to check that one out. Overall, though, I think that this lineup here might be a little bit more niche, but definitely some good looking games to check out in the second half of March. Moving on, we do have some big news for really both Nintendo as well as PC today, and that's because we got some more information on Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. And really, it is starting to sound like this is going to be a massive expansion. In fact, that's how Capcom is describing this expansion. They're very specifically wording it as a massive expansion. More or less, it does look like this is going to be what Iceborne was for Monster Hunter World. That's what we're looking at here with Sunbreak, and this has the potential of really getting a lot of people excited. I mean, you look back at Monster Hunter World, that's a game that sold nearly 20 million copies worldwide, a lot of which came after that Iceborne expansion. These games do sell for years and years, so this is definitely big news. What exactly does this expansion include, though? Well, it is a lot. This does include a new story, a new base of operations, new locales such as the Citadel, which has a vast environment. There's new mechanics that you can mess around with, such as the wire bug. There's also a new hunt Hunter rank called Master Rank, and then last but not least, because this is the point of the game, it does have new monsters as well. It does include four new monsters, but most importantly, we also got a release date. Yes, we did get an official worldwide release date for June 30th. So in just a little over three months, you're going to be able to play Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, and it is looking like a very beefy expansion that I think Monster Hunter fans are going to be pretty happy about. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that they did say in order to access the DLC, you can only do this after completing the seven star quest at the gathering hub. So make sure to do that before Sunbreak releases. That way you can just jump in right away. One last thing to note, though, is that if you are an Amiibo collector, they actually announced several new Amiibo as well. I will include a picture here, but keep an eye out for those as we kind of know Amiibo tends to sell out relatively quick anymore, so make sure to keep an eye out for that as well. Nonetheless, for you Monster Hunter Rise fans out there on Nintendo or PC, mark your calendars for June 30th as Sunbreak is looking pretty good. Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day though, and with E3 right around the corner and it does appear that Xbox will be doing some type of an event, I wanted to know what announced game from Xbox would you most want them to reveal gameplay I mean, they do have several announced games that's in development that we know about, but we really haven't seen much on them as of yet. So I wanted to see which one you all wanted to see the most, and most of you all did vote for the upcoming Starfield game that we'll be releasing later in 2022. 51% of you all did vote for Starfield. Second place, though, was Fable at 24%, then Avowed at 11%, and then you have Perfect Dark at 10%. So there you have it, a lot of excitement continues to surround the upcoming Starfield. This is the first new IP coming from Bethesda in decades, so, so that alone, without any type of gameplay, has piqued a lot of people's interest. The creators of games such as Skyrim or Fallout 4 is working on a brand new IP in space. The potential is definitely here. Now, I will say that Bethesda has a tendency of releasing their games with some different bugs and issues, but their worlds are just so engrossing, so massive, and they always have that gameplay hook that fans seem to absolutely love. So without a doubt, I can absolutely understand why there's so much excitement surrounding Starfield. Fable coming in second place, though, this one is really interesting. This is one of those staple franchises for the original Xbox and Xbox 360, and we haven't seen Fable for quite a while. Fable Legends was in development for the Xbox One for quite a while, but unfortunately it was canceled. I actually thought that that one looked pretty interesting, but it did have a different focus than some of the previous Fable games. 
prior. This was more of a multiplayer game. But in this situation, we're seeing Playground Games, the studio behind Forza Horizon, well, they built a new studio to work on a Fable game for the Xbox series. Now, Forza Horizon is not only well known for being one of the best racing games currently, but they're actually viewed as some of the all-time greats. But at the same time, an RPG is quite a bit different than a racing game. What I will say, though, is that as some of that talent can transition over to Fable, then we could end up being in for a really exciting game, or at least that is the hope right now. We'll kind of see how all this plays out, but that's the thing. I mean, we do need to see several of these Xbox games. We need to see gameplay on them, not just these cinematic trailers. So hopefully we'll get more information on some of these games sometime here soon. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode. But if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.